The boundary of neural network trainability is fractal. Cool, very short paper here. Um, some long time viewers might remember that I had a video, I wanna say months ago now, um, where I was talking about fractals and neural network training loss landscapes. Um, we still have not hit upon the thing that I was talking about specifically, um, but this is very close to it. Um, and this is, I feel dumb, something that I could have performed myself and tried this out. I wish I had, um, but I kind of skipped past it. At that video when I predicted this stuff, I was looking at the embedding um, layers trying to find fractals there did not find any which makes sense um, but that was the full extent of my coding experience at the time my ability to actually expo explore this stuff i wish i had more recently looked back at this and decided to do what this guy did um so or not guy or person joshua um hats off to joshua let's get to it um so in this paper i visualize the bif or joshua visualizes the bifurcation boundary between hyperparameters which lead to successful and unsuccessful training of neural networks Joshua finds that this boundary is fractal in all experimental conditions. Um, so, explain this. Uh, bifurcation boundary is a thing in fractals where basically um, uh, when you plot... So, so, hyperparameters. You know hyperparameters are just um, uh, the kind of settings of the model, how big the model is, how deep, all, all this stuff. Um, learning rates, that kind of thing. So, Joshua tests out a many 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 combinations of a bunch of hyperparameters specifically i think it was learning rates it was the one of the main ones they tested out um and then when you look at trying every single possible learning rate and every single possible i don't know dropout rate or whatever parameter you want, you want to look at um, when you compare these two at a very high resolution and you continuously try out different hyperparameters and train a model on each of those combination of parameters um, you can then chart them out uh, into these very pretty looking graphs um, and you find that the boundary the bifurcation boundary is a thing in um, in fractal geometry where basically here what do we have we have output layer learning rates on the y-axis and we have input layer learning rate on the x-axis right um, and then what does blue and red what do blue and red mean which one is which uh, Images show a 2D grid search over neural network hyperparameters for point shaded in red, training diverged, as in did not work, it did not actually succeed. For point shaded in blue, training converged, paler points correspond to faster convergence or divergence. Okay, uh, so let's look at this one first up. The This is a very uh, cleaner one. So what was that? I think red was diverge and blue was converge, right? And then faster is these paler areas. Um, this bifurcation boundary basically looks at, you could say, in the way in fract this works in fractals, is you can keep zooming in on this bifurcation boundary and you will find just more and more complexity at the boundary. That's kind of the essence of this fractal stuff, right? And we can explore these. They're actually hyperlinks, I think. How do I... Can I go to this hyperlink? Is it not going to let me? So each image is a hyperlink to an animation zooming into the corresponding fractal landscape. Um, there's Okay, there's other ones here. We'll, we'll look at the actual displays in a second. They're very pretty. What else we compare? Output layer learning rate versus input layer learning rates. We did... Um, some of them have full batch, some mini batch. Um, total learning rates, input layer weight offset. So a bunch of comparisons, right? Let's go to the GitHub and let's look at the actual visuals they have. Where was it? Is it this? Why can't I click on this? Search with Google. I swear earlier I could just click on one of these and it would bring me to the actual It's not working. Where do we find? I, sw I swear there was an easy website to get to, um, to, to look at really cool visuals of this. All right, well, no visuals of the paper. Um, sorry about that, no visuals, but whatever. Um, basically, it would just zoom in, and as you've seen with any kind of Mandelbrot fractal zoom, you keep zooming, and it just gets more and more complex as you zoom. Big difference here, though, is that instead of being very geometric and, like, ordered um, the training landscape is very organic looking probably due to very high dimensionality 
uh, to explore how general fractal behavior is, I perform experiments on six conditions. So the baseline, use the tangent or tan h nonlinearity, full batch gradient descents, uh, search over n naught or eta naught and eta one, aka the learning rates of the input versus output layer. This is all two layer um, feed forward networks, just very, very simple. Um, tried out a relu, tried out an identity nonlinearity, aka a deep linear network, tried out mini batch. Um, tried out uh, only a single training data points and tried out a, a grid search over different pair parameters. Um, I think that was the bottom right here. Um, so most popular fractals defined by bifurcation boundaries iterate only a simple one-dimensional function consisting of a low degree polynomial or ratio polynomials. If you've ever looked up fractal zoom before, that's those, they all use very simple functions. The resulting fractals are typically perceived as possessing a lot of both repeated geometric structure and symmetry. Mandelbrot's an example. Uh, in contrast, neural network training involves iterating a complicated function with many random terms stemming from weight initialization and training data acting in a high dimensional space. The resulting fractals seem visually more organic with less repeated structure and symmetry. Uh, he decided which regions of the hyperparameter landscape to explore by hands in an ad hoc way, and the resulting images are inevitably biased. So these up here, the entire landscape doesn't look like this. A lot of the landscape is just plain converge or diverge, um, but they searched out cooler looking parts of the landscape. Some regions of the bifurcation boundary for the experimental conditions in section two will not be fractal. Uh, for mini-batch training, the iterated function is stochastic rather than deterministic to mini-batch sampling. Uh, he was surprised that this stochastic function also generated fractals. So the fact that there's randomness involved and it still had fractals is very interesting. Um, without the fine multi-scale structure being corrupted by mini-batch noise, you'd think that um, there wouldn't be clear boundaries because the randomness would just melt everything together and make like a kind of a soup of divergence versus convergence. Oop, hit the mic. Um, but in reality, it still was fractal, which is pretty interesting. This is suggestive of Lyapunov fractals, which I'm not very familiar with, for which the function being iterated changes at every time step in a sequence, though in a more restricted way. Um, look more into that if you want to, I'm not going to bother. It has been a challenge to extend Mandelbrot and Julius sets to higher dimensions in a satisfying way. That challenge should not exist for fractals stemming from neural network hyperparameters. They are naturally defined in three or more dimensions. Many types of meta-learning automi Optimized hyperparameters associated with neural network training. The meta loss landscapes associated with neural network hyperparameters are often behaved are often pathological and chaotic, and descending this badly behaved landscape is a central challenge in meta-learning. The loss function visualized in figure one can be interpreted as a meta loss landscape. These experiments therefore suggest a more nuanced explanation for chaotic meta loss landscapes. Meta loss landscapes have extreme sensitivity to small changes in hyperparameters because they are fractal in those hyperparameters. So the whole meta learning subfield, no wonder it's so difficult, basically. The best performing hyperparameters are typically near the edge of instability, and meta-training seeks out this region in order to minimize the meta-loss. So the actual best models will not be over at this, on the left side or on the right side. The best models will actually be deep into these crevices, which is pretty interesting, um, and also makes it more risky. Uh, that's about it. I want to see before we leave if I can get the actual fractal zoom to work. Where Where is this thing again? Because um, I'm annoyed that I can't get that to work. Where is it? Was it not in? Why is it not in the same? I don't want to go through a whole collab right now to do all this. I swear there was an easy link. I'm so annoyed. There was an easy way. Like when I right clicked this, there was a way to just get the um, the link that it linked to. I wonder if I can find out my history. No, I'm not gonna bother with that. Anyways, I guess it's the end of the video. Um, like, subscribe, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, end of video.